Hello, we are glad to welcome you to our newest build guide video. Autobomber Void Knight is one of the most powerful, and most popular, last epic builds. For a good reason, it allows you to simply run through pretty much any type of content and obliterate everything on your path with auto-casting anomaly and devouring orb. If you come by a stronger enemy, you simply nuke it with smite and continue running. The featured build uses devouring orb that constantly orbits around you dealing heavy damage to everyone who comes close enough with it and creating multiple abyssal orbs that seek enemies to detonate them, dealing strong area of effect void damage. The build also uses Anomaly to create a time bubble on you, which offers a high increase to life leech and crit rate, to take care of both defense and offense. As a result, you will be able to auto-kill monster packs without ever stopping. When it needs additional health or mana, or where there's a boss to kill, it uses smite to deal high single target damage and restore valuable resources in the process. For most rare enemies, you won't even need to cast it manually, as properly modified lunge will do it for you. To bump up the build survivability and void damage even more, we utilize the void themed sigils of hope. It's one of the best builds to quickly farm monoliths thanks to the high mobility and ability to kill monsters just by standing close to them. The build is also very durable. It has very high health, a decent chance to block incoming attacks, and amazing sustain from health leech. You don't need any particular uniques to make it work, and it scales very well with just your levels and passives. This gives you a lot of freedom in gear customization. You won't have any problems with mana management. In fact, the main skill you will be using in single target scenarios restores your mana instead of spending it. While bossing is in fact comfortable, it's not necessarily fast. Pushing for very high DPS is quite hard. Many players find the playstyle of walking around quite boring in the long term. The build reaches the peak of its damage capabilities with rare and exalted items, but there are a few uniques that could be used to improve your defenses to make you truly unkillable. Some of them are quite difficult to obtain so don't stress about getting them too much. This great unique ring offers void damage leech and increased leech rate, which is very much appreciated in this build. Moreover, it provides a decent chance to apply doom on hit, which increases your damage output by a solid bit. These amazing unique gloves give us void barrier, a stacking buff that reduces damage taken by 5% per stack, up to 15% total. Stacks are doubled when we are taken below our endurance threshold, but it comes at a cost of receiving cleansable void damage over time for 15 seconds after the effect ends. It's a very powerful unique shield that will greatly increase your survivability and sustain thanks to the 100% block chance modifier. With this shield equipped, you could drop some block chance passives on the passive tree in favor of additional damage or health. This build is devoted to the void, so obviously it's the only damage type you want to increase with your gear. To improve your single target damage you should focus on the cast speed and critical strike, be it chance or multiplier. Sources of adaptive or void spell damage are also very useful. One of the best aspects of this build is the vitality synergy, as it will increase your base health and improve your damage significantly, so you should stack that attribute as high as you can. Movement speed is a universally good stat for every build, including this one. You can make great use of large Raya idols as they can grant you a lot of increased damage with your smite ability. Try to get ones with additional resistances or health. You can also get one with the modifier that heals you a bit every time you use a lunge. To fill remaining idol slots, use stout idols, ideally with both health modifiers, but you can also use a few resistance modifiers there. You will need to spend at least 20 points in the base sentinel passive tree in order to unlock more advanced options. The best passives to take here are fearless and armor clad as they greatly improve your durability. Time and faith will restore some of your health and mana when you use smite, which is a great deal as you will use that skill quite often. Gladiator and valiant charge are great passives to spend your remaining points on. Temporal Corruption greatly affects your smite as it converts its damage type to void and removes the baseline heal. But worry not, as the World Eater grants you a lot of health leech, so you will be healing yourself with every smite anyway. Renouncement makes Vitality Attribute even more valuable, 
as it improves the smite's damage scaling with it even further. Echoing strikes, and the nodes connected to them, grant you the unique ability to echo your skills, which basically doubles your damage output. The remaining passives in this tree offer you a lot of useful stats that make you tankier or deal more damage. Defiance passive grants you a lot of elemental resistances, which makes your gearing a bit easier. Your goal in this passive tree is the Heavenfire Notable that adds a lot of flat spell damage as long as you hold a shield. To unlock it, put one point into Holy Symbol, which will heal you from time to time. You will be taking only one passive here. The Steel Aegis provides a bit of block chance but doesn't scale with investment, so there is no reason to do so. Smite sends a Holy Bolt at the targeted enemy to deal damage and heal nearby allies, including yourself. The Void version of this skill deals more damage but doesn't provide healing. This skill tree turns Smite into a powerful single target ability. It deals a ton of damage, crits often, and when it crits, it just deletes enemies from existence. Thanks to Pillars of Light, it will also double cast over one third of the time. Conviction puts a heavy penalty on the cast speed, but the crit chance it provides definitely make up for that. Devouring Orb is the signature skill of this build. By default, it creates a stationary orb that deals damage to enemies every time something nearby dies. Dark Moon fundamentally changes the behavior of this skill, as it causes the Devouring Orb to orbit around you, dealing massive damage to everything it touches. On the other hand, Abyssal Emission makes it so it releases homing Abyssal Orbs that will seek nearby enemies on their own. With this, you can walk around and enemies will die around you pretty much everywhere. You can recast this ability manually every few seconds, or automate it with a specific trick explained in the pinned comment. Anomaly skill comes with its own combo. The first cast throws enemies into the future, while recasting causes them to come back to you. As interesting as it might sound, we will not use this feature at all. Instead, in the skill tree, we focus on the time bubble branch. Casting this ability will create a time bubble on you, which will improve your critical strike chance, cast speed, and grant you improved health leech. The immediacy is used to cancel out the initial effect of the anomaly, as it is simply a DPS loss in this case. Lunge is one of the two movement abilities Sentinel has access to. It causes you to dash to your enemy and quickly strike it with your weapon. Holy Incursion is an amazing passive that triggers smite on nearby enemies based on the distance traveled with the lunge, which will kill most rare monsters on your way. Double Strike passive gives you an additional charge of this ability so you can use it twice in a row but slightly increases the cooldown in return. Thanks to the Cull of the Weak, you can instantly kill any enemy that has less than 15% health. It helps with proccing Reckless Skirmish, which gives you a haste buff every time you kill an enemy with this skill. Sigils of Hope is a stacking buff ability that gives you additional fire damage and health regeneration for every sigil you have summoned. Sigils of Despair converts the fire damage bonus into Void type. It also exchanges health regeneration into a pure damage bonus. The Last Wish Notable gives you a chance to automatically cast this skill when you kill an enemy, while the Tetragram raises the limit of summoned sigils by 1, thus increasing your damage even further. The remaining points are taken to increase your overall durability. The Black Sun timeline has plenty of good options, but the best one here is the chance to shred void resistances on hit to boost your damage significantly. The Age of Winter offers many good defensive blessings, but to greatly benefit from your high block chance you should aim for improved block effectiveness. The Spirits of Fire timeline is quite similar as it also offers some very useful defensive blessings. Improved Endurance is the best deal, but you can also opt for Fire Resistance or Armor. In the Reign of Dragons, you can get a very powerful blessing that provides resistances to all damage types at once, which will greatly reduce the burden on your gear. Critical avoidance chance is also very good. Ending the storm offers arguably the least interesting choices. You can take the lightning resistances or improved health regeneration depending on your needs. That sums up our build guide. We hope you will give it a try. If so, please leave a like, subscribe, or comment your opinion. Have a good day, and see you in the next one.